today more on the unoccupied housing question. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, Web Analytics Post, covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, a few days ago, I made a post about the census and the one million unoccupied residential dwellings that was reported in that particular return, which of course was done last year, and the data came out quite recently. I had a number of people ask a whole bunch of questions about this, and I thought I would do a further dive into the data. And in fact, what I've now done is to plug the ABS unoccupied housing data into my modelling, which gives me more insight as to what's actually going on. So by way of context, here is the relevant section from the census. The series is called G36 Dwelling Structures, and it's the count of private dwellings and persons in occupied private dwellings. And they actually separate that by houses, different types of semi-detached houses, flats and apartments, including, of course, one or two storey blocks, three storey blocks, four storey blocks, nine or more storey blocks, and attached to a house. And we've also got other dwellings such as caravans, cabins, houseboats, improvised homes, or very importantly, houses or flats attached to a shop or office. And that gives us a total. And then we also have the total of occupied private dwellings, which is the sum of that, plus the unoccupied private dwellings to give us the total across Australia. Now, I have looked in detail at the way the census is constructed and specifically where they get the identifying information from with regard to how many houses or apartments or units, etc. there are. So I can't tell whether they use electoral data or other information, maybe rateable value information from councils. It's just not clear. So we actually don't know what the baseline starting point is. But nevertheless, they did report that there were about a million properties that actually were unoccupied on census night. And as I said in my previous report, that of course would include some people who were in one home rather than the second home. It would also include people who were absent for various other reasons, plus, of course, those properties which may just be vacant. And some of those will be in holiday areas where there could be holiday homes, for example. So it is quite complicated, but it is worth looking in more detail at how this all pans out. And I've, what I've done here is I've taken the unoccupied count in each of the states and also mapped the percentage, and so you'll see in the ACT, a relatively small number, and it's just under 8% of dwellings unoccupied. Now in New South Wales, it's quite a lot higher. It goes up to nearly 300,000 unoccupied dwellings across the state, and there the total count is over 10%. In the Northern Territories, a very small number, but it's about 14% of dwellings that are unoccupied. In Queensland, it's just under 190,000 and just under 12% that are unoccupied. In South Australia, it's about 75,000 unoccupied private dwellings, and that's about 15% of dwellings. In Tasmania, it's a pretty small number, but it's 16%. In Victoria, Again, it's close to 300,000, and it's around 14% of dwellings. And in Western Australia, it was about 100,000, just over, and around 16% of dwellings unoccupied. So it does vary considerably by state. But the more interesting question is when you look at it more granularly, you start seeing a few quite interesting things. What I've done next is I've gone to the individual postcodes and I've calculated for each postcode, the postcode obviously itself, the location, uh, the area within which it is in, the total count of unoccupied dwellings, the percentage of total dwellings that are unoccupied. I've also put the housing count there and also the mortgage stress. The first observation is there's very little correlation between mortgage stress and unoccupied properties. 
So let's look at the top few in some detail. We start with postcode 3000, that's in the centre of Melbourne. And there, and there we have more than 10,000 unoccupied properties in that postcode, and that's 32% of all properties there. Then we go to postcode 2540, that includes Sanctuary Point, St George's Basin, Sussex Inlet. And that, of course, could well be a story of second homes. Maybe, maybe not. A lot of people in Canberra may well have second homes down in southern New South Wales on the coast. More than 7,300 are occupied there at 28%. Then we go to postcode 4217 in Queensland. That includes Surface Paradise and Main Beach and areas there. And there we have more than 7,000 unoccupied or 27%. Then we go across to Western Australia in the Mandra area, where we've got more than 6,000 unoccupied properties. That's more than 17% of all properties are vacant there at the moment, according to the census. And as you will know from my earlier work in this area, this whole postcode has been struggling for some time with falling property values, higher mortgage stress, and many property investors underwater. So this is probably more than second holiday homes. Then we go to Mornington Peninsula, postcode 3941 actually, and there more than 6,000 unoccupied, that's 53%. Now that could of course be second homes there. Then we go to Cowes, postcode 3922 in Victoria, and again that potentially could be holiday homes, more than 5,000 unoccupied, but that's 55%. But then we go back to South Bank, postcode 3006, right back into the centre of Melbourne again. And there, 28% of properties are unoccupied, more than 4,700. That looks like, to me, just pure low occupancy, or rather than holiday homes. Then we go to Broad Beach and Mermaid Beach and other postcodes there in postcode 4218 on the Gold Coast. 21% vacant. 3,892. Then we go across to Toowoomba, and there, in postcode 4350, we have more than 3,800 properties reported as unoccupied. That's 8%. Then we come back to Sydney, postcode 2000, centre of Sydney, of course, and there, 3,800 are actually unoccupied, or 25%. Then we get a postcode 2539, which includes a number of areas in the Southern Highlands and Shoalhaven. And there we have 3,600 unoccupied, or 30%. That could include many holiday homes, I guess. And then we go to the Sunshine Coast, postcode 4551, which includes Calundra. And there we have 3,587 unoccupied, or 12%. Then we come back to Melbourne again, to South Yarra, postcode 3141, with more than 3,500, or 21.3%. And then we go to postcode 2428, including Charlotte Bay and Foster, in the mid-north coast. And there are more than 3,297 were unoccupied, or 22.91%. This, of course, is last year, before the latest floods. And then we go to Mackay, postcode 4740, and there 3,292 are unoccupied, which is 9.64%. So you can see here that the story is clearly quite complicated. There are multiple facts going on, but I do want to make the point that some of those areas are not in necessarily holiday hotspots. So there is more going on than I think many would want to recognise. And I've said previously from my own surveys, in some areas, in the around Docklands for example, we know that there are very large numbers of vacant properties. They've been purchased but have never been occupied simply because those properties have been held vacant deliberately, just riding the value up. And rather than actually having people in them and wearing them out, and therefore degrading their value, they're just being held empty. Now, there is another way we can look at this information, and that's through my mapping tools. And I have actually loaded all this information into my core model. And I will just, before I move to show you the maps, 
I'll just show you how it translates into my core model. So now for every postcode in the core model, there's a new section here, which actually highlights the property profiles. So if I look at postcode 3000, in that postcode, there are seven houses, there are 21,559 units or 99.1%. There are 188 other, and that includes people living over shops. And the total occupied number is 21,754. They also reported 37,142 people, which is a population ratio of 1.16. It does vary quite considerably by each postcode. And as I said before, vacancies 10,259 or 32%. So I have this information now available for every postcode in my model. And those who have access to it via Patreon next month will be able to access that additional information. But now what I want to do is show you my mapping more specifically. And here's an example from Sydney where we're showing the percentage of properties vacant. I've gone with percentage this time rather than counts because I suspect that gives us a better view of what's going on. And you can see here that closer into the centre of town, well, there are a number of quite high counts around North Sydney and just into the Sydney CBD itself. If you pull out from that, you start to see some of the cooler colours, which is an indication of lower counts and many of them are 7 to 13 or even 7% and below. And if you pull out further, it's pretty much the same story, which suggests that some of these areas are definitely vacant, not necessarily because of holiday accommodation. I'd also highlight the fact that Parramatta and Homebush Bay in those areas are also somewhat higher as well as those areas towards the northern beaches. And pulling out a little further, we can see quite a consistent pattern in the area. And I would like the point that this is a very different pattern to our mortgage stress picture that we have mapped many times before. So if I start with Melbourne 3000 and the surrounding areas, we can see that those areas are very much showing high vacancy rates. And that's consistent with the mapping and also consistent with the analysis that shows there are lots of people who are holding property vacant. And if we pull out further, we can see that the counts do get lower as we go further out. And in terms of the outer suburban areas, the vacancy rates are quite low. It's also worth noting, if we drop round beyond Geelong, into some of those holiday areas, we can see very high counts of percentage of properties that are vacant. Um, remember that was census night during the week. So they might well be holiday homes. If I then go to Brisbane, again, in the centre of town, the vacancy rates are quite high. And as I pull out, we see that the story is somewhat similar. As you go further out, you get more of the very low counts of unoccupied property. And as you pull out further, it's pretty consistent. And even down to the Gold Coast, there are some areas probably holiday accommodation related. And there are a few inland areas too. I also make the point that somewhere like Ipswich, which has very high stress, has relatively low unoccupied properties, which I think is Quite interesting. Now if I go to South Australia, again we find that in the centre of town there's quite high levels of vacant properties 
But if we pull out from that, the story becomes pretty consistent with very low levels further out in the urban suburban areas. It's also worth highlighting that some of the coastal areas are a bit higher. Again, that could be second homes, I guess. And indeed, up in the Adelaide Hills, you could argue the same. Now, if we go across to Perth, again, we find a similar story. Close in to the centre of Perth, the vacancy rates are pretty high. If you pull out, you start to see a different story with a lot of the inner suburban areas very low in terms of vacants. Some of the coastal areas, for example, around Cottesloe and Fremantle would seem to be more vacant, and that may well be, again, holiday related. And if I pull out to go down the coast towards Rockingham, and Mandra, we start to see some large accounts in and around the Mandra area, as I reported earlier. In Tasmania, the story is relatively benign insofar that even close into the centre of town the vacancy rates are quite low. If you pull out slightly further again you see swathes of blue which does highlight to me that most of the time things are pretty tight although if you go into some of the holiday areas maybe you could argue again for holiday homes. And just to complete the picture, we'll look at Darwin with some levels of vacancies. And as we pull out, we can see some high levels of vacancies away from the centre of Darwin. But the numbers here, of course, are pretty low. So whether it really has much consequence is hard to tell. So I guess the point I want to leave you with tonight is that I think there is a very important piece of analysis to be done as to the root cause analysis of why the vacant properties exist where they do. Is it purely second homes? Is it people who have chosen not to return a census form? Is it people holding property vacant deliberately? Or is it people in transition moving from one area to another area? So far as I can see, some of the real hotspots are more described correctly by people holding properties vacant. And I think Melbourne 3000 is probably the best example we have of that. So I still think there is a very strong case for more detailed analysis by the states looking at the current profile of property and how much is really vacant, because of course if property is vacant, it's a wasted asset then, and it means that it could be somebody's home. And maybe there is a point to be made here about the need to intervene in some way, whether it's through the tax system or through the rates system, to try and get some of that property back into useful hands. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.